The Titans are more than a playoff contender. This is a team that I think can go all the way because when people are counting you out and they're only giving you three and a half points at home against, a, sure, a hot Dolphins team, but still a Dolphins team that lost seven games in the middle of the season, and you can beat them by 31 at home in the pouring rain, yeah, that's a recipe for a team that can go the distance, especially when you take into account that they control their own destiny to get the one seed. All that coming up here. I'm Matthew Peterson from Chat Sports. We're going to recap this Titans-Dolphins game on today's show. But before we get into the nitty-gritty of it, I want you to like this video. I want you to like this video because you believe this Titans team is not just playoff bound. We knew that a long time ago. But this team is not only a playoff contender, this is a playoff ass-kicking team, all right? This is a team that's not just going to go in and leave after the first game. Like this video if you think this, is, this team has the stuff to go the distance when they're healthy, which they can get healthy over the bye if they pick up a bye. Plus, they basically have two byes. They're playing the freaking Texans next week. So this is a team that can get very healthy over the next two to three weeks going into the heart of the playoffs. We're going to check out the updated NFL playoff picture because that's what all we care about this moment, okay? 34-3, that's fun and all. We'll show you Tannehill's numbers later on. But let's get to the meat and potatoes of what this video really is. And that is the fact that the Dolphins, sorry, the Titans, have shot themselves up to the one spot. And they got a little help from the Bengals who pulled off a bit of an upset at home against the Chiefs. And that has now slingshotted Tennessee to the one seed. They control their destiny. They have the tiebreaker over Kansas City. A win next week against the Texans. A revenge game, by the way. I'm kind of happy now. If you beat the Texans the first time, we don't even have this conversation. But how about this Titans team? This is going to be a second straight time. Remember a couple years ago, the Titans beat the Texans in Week 17 to help their playoff odds and help them move up in the playoffs and win the AFC South. This time, it's to win the one seed. And here's what I'm looking at. I'm thinking about one thing only. That's Derrick Henry. You get the bye. You get Derrick Henry an extra week to recover. He's already built different. He's an absolute monster. And you go into the divisional round with your star running back returning, who definitely doesn't need time to warm up. It's Derrick Henry we're talking about here. You get Henry back after the bye, get out the way. I mean, this Titans team is simply going to be on a war path all the way to the Super Bowl. And that's why I'm thinking, if you want the bye, which you absolutely do, because the bye helps Derrick Henry's return odds, and that way you don't have to play in the wild card round, and maybe Henry's not ready then, and you get upset on the road, or sorry, upset at home like last year. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So go get the bye right now. And a great way to do that is by hitting that big red button. Yeah, cliche YouTuber time here, because if you want the Titans to get the bye, you can't afford any bad mojo. You cannot afford Davis Mills to put up a Super Bowl-level performance next week and have the Chiefs pull off a miraculous come-from-behind Week 18 switcheroo for the one spot. Subscribe right now. Do your part. And that way, next Sunday, you can have a clear conscience, a clear mind. You don't have to worry about, did I hit that big red button? Yeah, you damn right you did. So subscribe right now to get more Titans news and rumors all year long. Let's check out some of the numbers from this one here. Deontay Foreman was a wrecking ball, and if Derrick Henry can't return, it's not a poor man's game with Deontay Foreman. He's not the Walmart version of, uh, of Derrick Henry. Maybe he's the Kroger version or like the Kirkland, but he's somewhere in between the two. Sure, he's not the MVP runner that Derrick Henry is, in my opinion, but he did pretty well today. Buck 32 and a touchdown. You'd like to see a little more production. I mean, Rodgers, just kind of some complimentary football. It can't If you get too reliant on A.J. Brown and you run into a team in the playoff that can bracket him off and double team him and then you need someone else to step up, you may not get that. But Ryan Tannehill, it wasn't the cleanest day for Ryan Tannehill, in my opinion, but it was the kind of day where you looked up and you know, all right, it's raining cats and dogs. Let's protect the football. Let's not shoot ourselves in the foot, and let's play with a lead. And that's exactly what he did. A slowish start, fine, no big deal. Nissan Stadium was a bit of a crapshoot today to get going. Everyone was punting. No one could buy a first down. But once this team got a lead, Tannehill did exactly what you wanted him to do, which is not to play with it. There was no opportunity, and a large part due to this Titans defense, which does not get enough love across the league and probably not even enough love in this show. But this Titans defense shut the door on what was a very hot 2-1 off, 2 offense and the Dolphins. 
So shout out to the defense for making plays all over. And Hooker, I'm just thinking about that one drop because that was right to the bread basket. And wouldn't have changed anything. Probably maybe maybe a 41 to 3 win, but that just popped in my head. So Amani Hooker, you get a shout out, but you would have got a bigger shout out if you made the interception. Here's what I want to ask you guys, though. I want you to grade the Titans' performance. Spam your A's. Get down in the comment section, AAA, and then send it to someone else and have them comment as well because this is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Titans. Kind of sluggish the last couple weeks. Sure, they came from behind against the 49ers and got in a groove late, but still they trailed by 10 at one point. This is what this team needed. This Titans team needed to play an above 500 team. Got that in the Dolphins. Playoff edge caliber. Dolphins didn't look like it, but they were looking like it going into the week. And beat the doors off this team. And that's exactly what Tennessee did. Get back to that middle of the season stretch where Tennessee won, what, five, six wins in a row against former playoff teams. Sure, the Dolphins, 10 wins last year, but missed the playoffs. But there's just as you can close to a non-playoff team as far as that goes. And the Titans got that. It's exactly what the doctor ordered. Look at the offensive numbers between these two teams. And it's all Tennessee across the board, essentially. Dolphins were passing it so much more because they were trailing by so much more. Titans didn't need to. They could run the football, and the defense was just shutting down any opportunity for the Dolphins to pick up a rhythm or get in a groove. So for the Titans offensively, they didn't have to do a whole lot once they got going. They let gravity, momentum, and Isaac Newton take over and just kept on rolling defensively though similar story where it was all Tennessee four sacks two takeaways just stifled this Dolphins run game which last week with Duke Johnson was all over the place this week Duke Johnson you put on Amber Alert you still couldn't find the guy he was nowhere to be seen for most of the game and in the passing game you held Miami to 177 yards despite the Titan despite the Dolphins passing it all over the field they were that desperate and with all the completions and all the attempts to only give up 177 yards that's even speaking louder to how good this secondary is in Nashville I want to ask this question though what's your one word reaction to the win this week against Miami let me know what you're thinking down below I think it's rain I think it's fun I think it's fun in the rain usually it's fun in the sun not this time let me know what your one word reaction is down below one more time, we'll just check out some of the notes and the stats here. Tua, like I mentioned, he threw the ball 38 times, and the Titans' defense held him to 177 team yards, 205 altogether for him. That is just a very underappreciated, but like, you got to get your blinders on and look for it. The, Titans, the Dolphins threw the ball 38 times, and they got 205 yards from Tua. That really speaks a large volume to how good this Titans secondary was today. And also on the offensive side, okay, A.J. Brown didn't have to have a whole lot. He made some big plays, but this was not the kind of game where you had to keep going to the well, sort of like last week where A.J. Brown goes off for over career day, over 10 receptions, over 100 yards, throw in some touchdowns, why don't you? And without Julio Jones, you didn't quite know what this offense would look like Sort of, because you had him, you haven't had him for much of the year, but there was this always evolving idea of when you get Julio and AJ at the same time, that's going to be super fun. May not have Julio, but at least you know you have good old AJ because he was dealing with some injuries, missed a couple, missed a couple of weeks earlier. Now he seems to be getting back into a rhythm. If you have not already, please subscribe to our Titans channel because we're putting out content all year long. We don't just stop when the season ends. We're going through the offseason because everyone knows that there's no offseason in the NFL. So hit that big red button, subscribe. If you've already subscribed, well, thank you. We really appreciate you joining the channel. We want to be a Titans family here, and we want to get this family growing very, very fast. One more time, we'll just talk about the playoffs to wrap up the video. You win next week, you get the bye. Control your destiny. You don't need any help. You're a big boy. You can do it yourself, Tennessee. You can beat one of the worst teams in the NFL, the Houston Texans, granted on the road, but still, and you get the bye. You give Derrick Henry an extra week to rest, get ready, get him back for the wild card round, uh, for the divisional round. And here's what that AFC playoff picture looks like right now. It's not a clear picture because we're recording this right now uh, through the middle of the 3.30, 4.30 p.m. games. And it's not a clear picture as we wait for all those results to come in. But we don't really give a damn about the results at the bottom. Who gives a shit about the wild card? Let's look at the one seed here. Let all the other kids below you work it out amongst themselves and take the worst seed after that. 
We're going to see you later here on the Tennessee Titans channel here at Chat Sports.